This is me, Kels, and here's my handsome husband, Jay. For the past year, we've been traveling the country in our schoolie with our adorable daughter, Pippa. Come along for the ride as we try to figure out this crazy journey of living and traveling in a school bus. On the agenda today, we're gonna harness the power from the alternator to charge our solar batteries. And I know, a lot of you are thinking, wait, didn't you already do that? So I have this 20 amp DC to DC charger, but 20 amps is nothing. Alex on his bus has like a killer setup where he's drawing like 2000 watts to charge his batteries when he drives and they charge in no time. And our 20 amp DC to DC doesn't really do a lot. So today we're gonna connect the alternator to the batteries, get loads of power. So I may have dropped the ball a little bit filming the whole install process. So here's my best attempt at illustration. So you have the bus with the alternator and then the unit we installed is the battery isolator which connects to the bus batteries and the solar batteries. So the alternator itself connects directly with the unit that I bought, I'll put the link in the description. And then the positive from the bus batteries connects to the same unit as well as the positive from the solar batteries. And then my OCD was kicking in here, so I had to make all the cables the same. Then you connect all the negatives together, and then everything is obviously grounded to the chassis of the bus. And then for the unit to only power on when the engine is on, there's an energized wire that runs from the unit to a fuse that's only active when the ignition is turned on. All right, so back where all the magic is. This is output two, this is output one, and then the input is right there. So the input comes from the alternator, then output one goes to our solar batteries and output two goes to these bus batteries. Basically this device activates when the engine is on due to the energize and then it charges the batteries of the bus and the batteries of our solar setup simultaneously and ensures that one set of batteries cannot drain the other. So far it has been working perfectly. This is how it works on the app when I'm driving, so you can see how much power I'm getting in. This gets us to like 100% within like just over an hour and a half of driving when we're down at like 50%, um, so it's been perfect. As much as we've been loving our time here in Phoenix, we've been really eager to get back out on the road. We also need to start heading east because we miss our family and we're hoping to visit them in England as soon as it's safe to fly again. After many delays, our tank finally arrived at the shop but the shop was extremely busy with other jobs and said they wouldn't be able to get to us for another two weeks. Alex and Jay decided to take things into their own hands and try to replace the tank themselves. We picked up the fuel tank and shoved it in our trunk as best we could. Then fueled up ourselves with some in and out First time in and out animal fries. Incredible. It's got the chutney on there. Just like, well, isn't this called like everything sauce or something? It's like secret sauce. So good. Before heading to a secluded spot to fix the tank. These guys are the dream team. I'm not sure there isn't anything they can't do together. They replaced the tank in a few hours. We said goodbye to our new friends, Tony and Mike from Since We Woke Up. And just like that, Bessie was road ready again. Big moment, you guys. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. So we've been at this spot for about a month. And to be honest, I'm quite fond of it. I going on a run this morning, like a goodbye run. Um, and it's it been kinda, our home. Kind of feels like home, yeah. yeah. But the fuel tank is now fixed. We've been here for well over two weeks and technically I think we're only supposed to be here for two weeks. I'm not eh. really sure. I think this spot's kind of chill. So we are heading from here in Phoenix. To, should we not tell him? Let's not tell him. We're not gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, let's hit the road. Back to what we do best.
just made our first stop and it is to give Bessie a little bit more TLC and love. I'm gonna give her a little bit of a bath. She's looking a little bit ratty. OCD with it. <laughs> that car, that man was just yelling, Bessie, Bessie, who's Bessie? So yeah, this is why we don't go out in public much because there's just so many crazies out there. I'd rather just be hidden in the desert. Hopefully he doesn't come back. Just filling up now with some water and then we are going to find a parking spot for the night. Probably a little bit farther away from here. It's a little bit sketch. It's a little bit sketch. As we settled in for the night, we have never been happier to stay at a truck stop because it means we're back doing what we love most. Travel also takes on a new meaning when you can do it with someone else you trust like Alex. And while we're being safe and definitely more limited to what we can do, we're grateful now more than ever to have a home that allows us to enjoy areas where there are little to no people around. We understand it's a blessing and it's not one we're taking for granted, not even for a second. Watch your butt. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big surprise. <laughs> 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 